Hello, welcome to Captain Dorja's Armory. This is Captain Dorja. Uh, we're on the 8.6 test server again, and uh, this time we're gonna take a look at we're gonna take a look at two videos of the Centurion Mark 7 one. Now, uh, the Centurion Mark 7 one, I've been interested in this tank for a little while uh, since I started watching uh, Quickie Baby's live streaming. Uh, he raves about how great this tank is. He loves it. He plays it a lot. He does really, really well in it. And uh, I was kind of interested to see how this tank played. So I figured, you know, hey, I'll test servers up. I'll get some Centurion games. Um, and I found out that this tank's really good. And uh, on the subject of this tank and it being really good, we'll discuss some of what makes it really good. Now, first off... It's a British Tier 9 medium tank. It comes after the Centurion Mark 1. And uh, the thing about the Centurions is that they're not the fastest mediums out there, but they reach their top speed really easily, they maintain their top speed really well, and they turn really good. So if you just put them on flat ground in a sprint against the other Tier 9 mediums, they would probably come in last. But mobility, as we all know, has a lot less to do with top speed than it has to do with acceleration, turning, and speed combined. Uh, a really good example of that, in my opinion anyway, is the Object 704. It has a pretty high top speed, but uh, in my opinion, it has quite poor mobility because it traverses like... Uh, I'm trying to think of a metaphor that's suitable, or a simile that's suitable, even. Mm, the Object 704 traverses like the Titanic with a broken rudder and no engines. The thing just doesn't turn. And if you get it on, if you get it off a road, then it really doesn't turn. And if you get it into any kind of swampy ground, just forget about it. But in a straight line, it goes like I, I think it goes almost 50. So, I mean, if you just went by raw speed, the 704 is more mobile than the Centurion 7 Mark I. But in actual terms of mobility, the Centurion is an incredibly mobile tank. Not because its top speed is so blisteringly high, but because its 32 degree traverse speed is quite good. And uh, it's got enough engine power that it's able to reach and maintain its top speed quite well. So even though it's not the fastest medium tank out there, it is very mobile. Uh, what it what the Centurion makes me think of is the baseball player's adage to to be quick but don't hurry. Uh, this tank is quick, but it's not hurrying. Uh, the other thing that I really wanted to get into with the Centurion Mark One is the guns, because its gunnery choices are kind of interesting. If you take a look at the tech tree, you can see the stock equipment for the Centurion Mark Seven. And with the stuck turret, the Centurion Mark VII turret, you can mount the Ordnance Quick Firing 20 pounder gun Type A barrel. That's the stock gun, and that is the gun for the Centurion 1 at Tier 8. You then upgrade that to the Ordnance Quick Firing 20 pounder gun Type B barrel. Then you can unlock the Centurion Mark IX turret and the 105mm Royal Ordnance L7A1 gun, and that is the top gun for this tank. Now, one of the things that I really wanted to test out was the guns, because like I said, I watch Quickie Baby a lot, and he loves this tank, and he talks about it a lot. And Quickie Baby's big thing is he plays this tank with the with the 20 pounder Type B barrel gun, because it's got higher rate of fire. So I wanted to test out this tank with, uh, with each of its two top end guns. So we'll take a look at them in the garage, and then we'll take a look at some videos where we're using the tank with each gun. Now, here's the quick firing 100 or 20 pounder Type B barrel and the 105 millimeter Royal Ordnance. Right now, mounted on the tank, I have the 20 pounder Type B, and just for kicks, the 105 looks like that. So it's just a meteor looking barrel. The 20 pounder has 226 millimeters of penetration, which is not nearly as much as the 
105, which has 268 pin. But if you take a look at some of the other tier 9 medium tanks, you'll see that they're upgraded guns. They're fully upgraded guns. You get about 220 penetration on most of them. The, uh, the T-54, you can mount a gun that does 200 pin or 220 pin. The, uh, the, I think the E-50's gun is about 220 pin as well. The uh, T-54 you want, I've been looking at that a lot on the test server, it's got a 210 pin gun. So, while the 268 millimeters of penetration is really nice, it'll allow you to, you know, have the firepower of a tier 10 as far as penetration goes, it's not really necessary. I mean, all the other tier 9 mediums are able to be excellent, excellent tanks while having only 210 to 220 penetration. So, I mean, why should the Centurion be different? So, that's one of the things you get with the 105mm gun. You get way more penetration. You also get substantially higher alpha damage. Uh, the 20 pounder, you have a 230 alpha damage, and with the 105 millimeter, you have 390. So that's a substantial increase in alpha damage. Uh, that's uh, 140 more damage per shot. That's pretty substantial. But that doesn't come for nothing. It comes at the cost of uh, longer aiming time, which is not that bad of a deal. 1.9 second aiming time on the 20 pounder is really good. 2.3 second aiming time on the 105 is, is still quite good. The real penal the real penalizer on the 105 is its rate of fire is just bad. The 20 pounder you get a 10.53 rate of fire, which is really, really high. And on the 105 you just get a five round per minute rate of fire. So you're you're getting uh, 42 millimeters of unnecessary penetration and 140 bonus alpha damage at the price of less than half as many shots in a minute. Now, uh, the DPM on the Centurion with the 105mm gun is um, 1950, 1950 damage per minute. So that's that's pretty good, but when you put on the 20 pounder gun firing almost two shots, firing more than two shots for every shot of the 105 millimeter, and doing only 230 damage per shot, your DPM goes from 1950 to 2421. Now, 2400 is a heck of a lot more than 1950 DPM. So what that means is when you have the 20 pounder on the tank, Whenever you have a shot in the chamber, you're firing it. On the 105, you have an enemy in your sights, and you're reloading. And while you're reloading, your team shoots the guy, and he either dies or he's got no health left. You fire, you do 100 damage, and the guy dies. So I found that the, I found that the uh, additional alpha damage wasn't really that much of a benefit, and it definitely did not outweigh losing 500 DPM and double my rate of fire. Now, the other thing that I want to touch on a little bit is the aiming time. The 2.3 second aiming time is pretty good, and with 100% crew, improved ventilation, and a vertical stabilizer, the gun aims fast. But with 1.9 second aiming time, 100% crew, improved ventilation, and a vertical stabilizer, you're, you're basically fully aimed all the time while you're driving around. Your aiming time in this gun is it is heinously low. You can you can poke and fire almost instantly with full accuracy. Um, now I've talked about why I liked the twenty pounder better, and I've said that I like the twenty pounder better. But let's take a look at a pair of videos and compare the result and let the results speak for themselves. All right, so this is the Centurion Mark Seven slash One. Right now we're equipping the 20 pounder type B barrel. We want to test out this 20 pounder gun. You can see for the test server this is actually really really good matchmaking. Uh, just a couple of tier 9's on each team and then a bunch of tier 8's rounding it out. You can see next to me an M5355 artillery. By now that's old news. But hey whatever. So uh, 
we're just gonna a lot of this video we're gonna focus on the gun performance but I also do want to kind of mention just how quickly the tank moves around like uh, it actually gets me into trouble um, a couple of times I pull out farther than I meant to and uh, traverse my hull farther than I meant to and took fire for that but anyway we'll get there so we're Ratted into the town. I just want to get this thing into action. You can see I don't have any premium shells loaded even on the test server. Partly because when you're going to try out something to see how it performs, it's it's stupid to try it out in a manner that you're not going to be using it. So, like, I mean, I don't get on here and test drive a new tier 10 with a full rack of premium shells because that's not how I'd be playing the tank. Okay, so I've just taken a shot from an enemy T-34, taking a look to see if I can fire at him. It's a little opening. I take the shot and miss. You can see how quickly the gun reloads. And I decide I don't really want to be on a corner going, going with a T-34, so I come down in here to see if I can get a couple of shots on these guys. And I'm thinking what I can do is I can watch for the Ag Tiger to fire and then, and then shoot, but I just decide to go around and fight. It's a test server. Take a little damage, you don't really care. So, uh, back off, because that was retarded. And... I'm getting a little bunged up on these craters here. I'm trying to side scrape this Mag Tiger, but... Um, fail. So he's, uh... He's able to put a couple of shots into me. Let's go! Enemy artillery is right here, which is kind of weird. The 1390 is just sitting in the open, so I come around and fire at him. Even with the quick reload, I wasn't able to get a second shot into the 1390, but I was able to get one into the T-34, who blows off my track and ammo racks me. I uh, use my repair kit on the ammo rack since uh, one of this tank's or er, one of this tank's. Uh, Strengths is rapid reloading. If you're driving a rapid reloading tank, you don't want to have a damage ammo rack. So here you can see the damage of this gun really being really, really showcasing. I fired. I would have only been able to fire two shots that 234 with the with the 105. And I was able to get in. I was able to get in four with the 20 pounder. Of course, it's hard to get a very good appreciation for the damage output of a gun when you're rolling with a pack of friendlies, because, you know, we each fire one shot and the guy loses 1,200 health, but... So, uh, watch with this IS-3 right here. Put one into him, put another into him. You can see how tight the aiming circle stays even while I'm on the move. I was almost able to get a third shell in, even with all the friendlies alphaing that guy. With the 105L7, I would have been lucky to get two. So, I mean, with this gun, I did 500 damage to that IS-3. With the 105, I would have done 400. That's only 100 less, but damage is. So we got a T-54E1 coming in. Dangerous tank. You can see the accuracy and the aiming time of this gun. The T-54E1 focuses on the Ferdinand. Well, he's not looking at me. I'm just blasting shots straight through his turret. There, you really get to see the rate of fire and punch of this gun. Punching through consistently, extremely accurate, very effective fire. You can see how quick the aim time is right there. I didn't have long to aim at that artillery before before taking the shot on him. We're able to get the kill. So this gun really does aim quickly. And again, you get the quick aim time on the shot at the T-69. He was only... Uh, I only stopped to aim at him for you know, a second and a half or so before I was able to fire, and that was uh, that was a tight shot over quite a bit of through quite a quite a few obstacles. So you can see this gun is very accurate; it aims very quickly, and uh, you can also see the the quickness of the tank. You know, I'm you've got a WZ111 over on that road, and that's a fast, heavy tank, and. He's, he's on a, a flat road, and uh, I am on 
in a field with rough terrain and I'm keeping pace with him. That's pretty quick. The, uh, the quickness advantage of this tank isn't in the fact that it has such a high top speed. It's that it gets up to its top speed very fast. So the moment you start moving, you're at top speed. And you maintain your speed over terrain and over obstacles really well. Okay, so that was the uh, that was with the 20 pounder. Let's take a look at with uh, L7, the 105. All right, so here we are on the Centurion 71. This time we've got the 105 millimeter Royal Ordnance L7A1 mounted onto this tank, and you can see again the matchmaker is pretty good. It's uh, mostly tier nines, a couple of tier eights, a lot of tier nine arty. First time I've ever seen an arty as the top tank on the enemy team, so. Uh, that was pretty interesting. Um, we're not going to be doing a lot of heavy combat in this match. This is uh, Westfield, so um, I'm going to go up onto the hill off to my right and do the medium tank thing. And uh, I think this is a really good example. Even though I don't do quite as much fighting in this match as in some matches, I think this is a, gives a good example of the... The attributes of this gun because uh, you're presented with snapshot opportunities and you're presented with fast moving targets things like that things where reload things where reload speed and aiming time are either gonna allow you to trash somebody or cause you to fail so I just want to point out that I love the way this tank looks. I find it very aesthetically pleasing. Just something about it. It just it just has a good look to it. The Centurion one, not quite so much, but this thing it just looks like a boss. I don't know, something about it the way it looks. It just says to me that it's not screwing around. Okay, so we're in position. Uh, I'm taking a very conservative position here because I'm the only one over here. You can see that there are a couple of tier 9 mediums on the other side of the valley. We have a scout who's AFK. And that's it. So, normally I'd move over to this area or this area. But since I'm the only person on this half of the valley, I don't want to go too far forward. Right, so T-71 spotted. That was a horrible shot on my part. That was just bad shooting. So, reloading. With the 20 pounder, I would have already been loaded and potentially could have had a second shot on that guy. But with this, no. I had to reposition and reload. The reload's too long. Then I get horrible, horrible RNG. And I actually bounce off the T-71. So, reloading. Again, I would have already had a second shot on this guy by now. Alright. Tracks are blown off. He manages to repair kit. He's back on the move. Reloading still. Alright, I've now done 409 damage to him. I fired 4 shots at this guy. At this point, with the 20 pounder, I could have fired 10 shots at this guy. Right. He's still alive. Five direct hits, or four direct hits into that guy, and he's still alive. So, I'm shooting at a light tank with a gun that's primary bonuses are penetration and alpha damage, and it took me four direct hits to damage him, and he was still alive after that. If I'd had the 20 pounder right there, that T-71 would have been dead. He wouldn't have made it into the base. He wouldn't have gotten any damage on that artillery. Now just remember, every time you watch the reload cycle on this gun, when it is about one tick mark short of being halfway reloaded, that's when you're firing your second shot with the 20 pounder. Okay, so we've uh, destroyed a lot of enemy tanks and most of the rest are spotted on the other side of the map, so I decided it's time to move up and spot this T-54E1. I'm not sure what I did on that shot, but I donked it. So, reloading. That would have been my second shot with the 20 pounder. With the 20 pounder, I would have already fired a second shot with this gun. Okay, there goes my second shot. So, reloading with the 20 pounder. Boom, fired again. I would have had three shots out by now. 
moves at the beginning. All right, I've got another shot into him. It's a 20 pounder I would have already fired seven times by now. So in that space of time where I engaged that uh, T-54E1, I put two shots into him. I did about 850 damage, 850 to 900 damage. With the 20 pounder, I would have been able to fire seven shots at him, potentially doing 1500 damage. So, with a uh, with a 20 pounder in that engagement, I could have I could have uh, more than doubled my damage just by rate of fire and superior aiming time. And the accuracy on the two guns is the same. So, if you're hitting most of the time with the 20 or with the 100 millimeter, rather the 105 millimeter, if you're hitting with the 105 millimeter, you really ought to be hitting with the uh, you really ought to be hitting with the 20 pounder as well. Okay, so now the T95 is the only thing left. He's up top, so I'm just going in for Artie. But the 20 pounder cleaning up the Artie would be really great because it's neither one of these guns can one shot them, so it's going to take two no matter what. So with the 20 pounder, I can fire my two shots really fast. So there we go. I almost one hit the M5355. I take a shot from him. I'm reloading. I'm reloading. Right, I ram the one already. Put my second shot into the object 212. He's still alive. I'm reloading. But the 20 pounder, that already's dead right now. I'm still loading. I'm still loading. Our already kills him. I'm aiming at the bat shot 155. 20 pounder I would have shot the building away earlier and then just reloaded and killed him. With this I decided to shoot the building away and uh, our T-50-2 runs in and ninjas the kill. Actually Lorraine gets the kill. I thought the 50-2 did. Anyway, whatever. It makes no difference. So there you have uh, my... those are my uh, impressions of the Centurion 7-1. I think it's a really really good tank. I think I'm gonna really enjoy having it and I think it's gonna be really strong but I also think equipping the 105 millimeter gun on it is a mistake well I hope you enjoyed my uh, my test server impressions this is Captain Dorja with Captain Dorja's Armory and uh, just remember you can never have enough big guns